This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and funny thing is, we're not actually reviewing either of these cameras, though. We will be comparing the thing we are reviewing to these cameras, but hey, it feels weird if I'm not holding something up. Anyway, we're doing something a little different. We haven't covered many cameras, and we're going to cover, cover the new Sony RX10. That's a very interesting, what's called a bridge camera. It's kind of like the best of an SLR with a little bit of a point and shoot DNA, that kind of thing going on. And we're actually using that to record me right now so you can see how it does for 1080p video recording. We're gonna look at it now. So here it is, the Sony RX10. I always wish I had reviewed the RX100 and RX100 Mark II for you guys because those were very groundbreaking, high-end point and shoots that were so good it was hard to even call them a point and shoot. This guy is another groundbreaking kind of camera. In photography lingo, it's called a bridge camera. What it really is is a fixed lens but otherwise SLR-ish device. In this case, that makes a little different from the average bridge camera. What you have here is the equivalent in 35 millimeter speak uh, t of a 24 to 200 millimeter zoom lens permanently installed on the camera, though it looks like a kind of compact SLR, doesn't it? And it weighs 1.75 pounds, so it's not super duper light. You know, small as SLRs go, a little lighter, but not so much. Uh, but what's special about the camera really is to start with the lens. That's an amazing zoom range, okay? And it's, you know, we've seen long zooms before on point and shoots, but this is continuous aperture f2.8. That is very unusual. If you want that kind of thing in a SLR kind of lens, well, probably you're gonna end up having to carry two lenses to cover that kind of zoom range, and those are gonna be expensive lenses. Those of you who are into photography know that wide aperture zoom lenses cost 750 bucks, sometimes $1,000. So this camera, the entire camera, is $12.99. So when you look at it that way, it's not an expensive camera, it's a bargain. If you look at it as a high-end bridge camera, then you say, well, that's expensive. Now, there's cameras for all sorts of needs. Some of you just want a complete SLR system. You like to be able to change your lenses. You maybe have fun shopping for a new lens every Christmas, that kind of thing. Maybe you need a full-frame sensor, which you're, you're getting into some serious money there and some serious photography. This guy instead uses the one inch sensor, same thing as on the RX100 and RX100 Mark II. That's bigger than a point and shoot sensor by far, but it is smaller than an APS-C size sensor using most consumer digital SLRs. This has a 2.7x crop factor on it, so you get the idea, about 1.5 on an APS-C. What it does have is Sony's, and God knows how you're supposed to pronounce this, but Bion's X processor inside. That's the same processor used in the new Sony Alpha A7 and A7R. Very high-end, full-frame, yet compact, sort of NEX-like body. So the processor gives us a whole lot more that it can do, a lot more versatility than something like the RX100 too, and even some SLRs, and we'll talk about that. First, to give you guys an idea of size, this is the Sony NEX5. That's the, the original NEX model, the smallest. Since then, the NEX6 and NEX7 have gotten bigger. So this is as compact as it gets, but it gives you the idea of the size for one of these ILC cameras and how small they can get. Here in the middle, we have the RX10. Lastly, this is the Sony Alpha 65, which is a APS-C, but fairly compact digital SLR. does have removable lenses, so there's the size difference. As SLRs go, this one's on the small and light side. Not wildly expensive. It goes about $500 for the body now. It started out life closer to $600, and it has a plastic body. And the lens I have on this is a... 50 millimeter prime 1.8 lens, so that's reasonably wide. It's not a super duper expensive lens, but in terms of aperture, it's pretty good. So look at the difference in the lens size right there. The, the lens on the RX10 is obviously a beefier kind of lens, and it's doing a whole lot. You've got zoom built in there too, and a pretty wide aperture. Now what's interesting about this compared to the NEX cameras is those actually have APS-C size sensors, so they have bigger sensors. Definitely still a very innovative line. That's going to be transitioning to just being called the Alpha. We'll see the Alpha 5000 and 6000 coming out soon. But back to this guy. Who is this for? Here, here's the synopsis right up front for those of you who don't want to watch and listen too much because there's a lot to talk about, about on this camera. I would say that, well, the, the head of Sony Imaging Division that designs this stuff said actually they had journalists in mind. And I have to say, this would be a great camera for me to carry around as a journalist, but it's for those of you who want SLR-like handling and 
manual controls and outputs. For example, this has a microphone input. This has HDMI out, so you can do lossless streaming via HDMI. And you want a good, fast lens. And you really don't care so much in the end if you switch lenses. Sony says that most folks stick with the kit lens. And that's a sad thing on a digital SLR because the bodies are very capable these days, but the kit lenses are, well, they're junk. They're usually, in terms of aperture, f3.5 to 5.6, a very slow lens. You're never really going to get much out of your camera. So for somebody who really just wants to get the maximum bang for the buck out of their camera without buying a whole lot of very expensive fast lenses, this one's for you. If you need manual control, this one's for you. If you also want a really good auto intelligent auto mode, this one's for you. If you need a long zoom, obviously this one's for you. It's a great all-around camera and it was designed equally as much for shooting videos, for doing still photos. So for those of you who need to do both, again, this is a great camera for you. So let's take a look around the camera. Obviously the lens is permanently attached on here, much as it looks like you might be able to remove it. We have a sizable and comfortable grip here. This is a magnesium alloy body with a leather-like kind of finish. It's weather resistant, it's not weatherproof, you can't dunk it in the pool, but if it's lightly raining when you're using it, that should be okay. Shutter button right there. Here's an interesting thing, and this is where you can see the dual heritage for this shooting video as well as for shooting still shots. You have zoom control over here, and you can also control it on the barrel, traditionally by spinning the lens around. This is fly-by-wire zoom. It's electronic zoom, piezo controlled. And like most fly-by-wire zooms, it's not the fastest thing. And you've got to do a whole lot of turning of the barrel to zoom. That's one thing that's not too thrilling for still photographers, but video folks will like it because it ensures a very smooth and steady kind of zoom. We have our usual informational LCD up top. And here we have EV. Handy. This is very handy to have, no matter what what function, whatever program you're running in, you've got your EV right here so you can adjust exposure just a bit if you need to. The lens has an aperture ring. Again, lovely for those of us who shoot an aperture priority. If you want to get good depth of field, some bokeh, that background blurring, you've got it here. And even nicer, and again, showing that it's doing double duty for those of us who shoot video as well as photography. You can have it you can probably hear it clicking like that the normal way, but there's a switch over here to turn off the clicking. So if you're shooting video, you really don't want the camera to pick up that sound. There you go, you can disable that. Here we have our focus selection. You can do autofocus, you can do direct manual focus if you want, so assist the autofocus if it's not doing such a great job. Full manual focus if you want to. Down here we've got the battery. This uses the same W series battery as the NEX cameras and the Alpha A7, so they are interchangeable and so are the chargers. There is no charger in the box. I think this is kind of annoying that Sony does this. It charges over a USB 2.0 cable kind of slowly, so you're probably, if you don't get a bundle with a charger, you're probably going to want to get a charger. And again, the charger for an NEX will work or an Alpha A7. Tripod pod mount over here. It, it's too far back. I really don't know why they did this because when you put the tripod mount on, it kind of blocks the articulating LCD. So you're going to want to pop your LCD out first before you put that on if you think you're going to need to use the articulating LCD. Over here we have our ports and we have microphone and we have audio out, which is nice. Those of you who take serious videos understand the need for that. Got our USB 2.0 port here and again our micro HDMI and this can stream HDMI out directly which is pretty darn cool. So if you've got an external video recorder, for example, you can use that. can actually output 4K photos if you have a 4K TV as well. So that's lossless HDMI right there. Again, a little professional touch. Some of the reasons why the camera ain't cheap. Up top here, like just about every camera in the world, you've got your program control. You can go from auto to video and then change your video settings if you want. Priority, aperture priority, shutter priority, program mode, normal stuff there. Pop-up flash over here. You actually have to press the button to pop up the flash and we'll turn it on. So we can pop up that flash. And you can't play with this one as much as you can with the RX100 in terms of turning it into a bounce flash by grabbing it and shifting it backward. Fairly small flash. You're going to want an external. And we do have the Sony's multi-interface shoe connector. Right now they make stereo microphone, shotgun microphone, all manner of flashes. You get the idea. And there are adapters to adapt that to a regular hot shoe if you need to, be, need to use that. 
Electronic viewfinder here, really stunning. And interestingly, it uses more power. When it comes to battery life, Sony says you get about 420 shots if you're using the LCD, but only about 330 if you're using the little electronic viewfinder. And it does have diopter adjustment. 3-inch LCD on the back, and it is an articulating LCD. So you can do pretty good range of motion. We'll turn sideways so you can see, and you can tilt it up. Pull it away from the body. So... Pretty good range of motion there. Not a touch screen, folks. The rear 3-inch LCD has 100% coverage and a little over 1.2 million dots. And the viewfinder has a little even higher resolution, XGA and about 1.4 million dots. So pretty good high resolution. And as you might see right here, there are some zebras. So this actually has the zebra feature. And really, that's great, particularly for folks who shoot a lot of video. It's a good way of judging your overexposure. And even nicer because it varies, you know, if you're shooting a portrait, you don't really care so much if the background's a little bit blown out, but if the background is important, you do. You can actually set that to come on anywhere from 70 to 100% in 5% increments. So again, nice little sort of pro feature there. While we're looking at the back, it's typical if you've used a Sony camera before. You've got your control wheel over here. Let's make the camera up. We've got AE lock here. We've got our function. We have our menu. Menus are fairly intuitive. And we've got the usual Sony wheel for controls here when we're in the menus. We've got quick access to play over here and delete. So on the side here, we have our card door. It works with SD or Memory Stick Pro Duo or Pro Duo HG cards. and is compatible with ultra high speed one cards as well. That's what we're using with the camera. So that's a class 10 card. And notice the NFC symbol here. This has both Wi-Fi and NFC on board. You can use Wi-Fi to transfer images to your, and video to your computer and also to your smartphone. And you can use your iOS device, your iPad, your iPhone, or your Android phone. It does not have to be a Sony branded one to actually can remotely control the camera as well as transfer images and video straight to your smartphone. Obviously at full extension this is a pretty long zoom lens here and it does give you information about how far out that you've zoomed relatively speaking to 200, 135, 170, so on you get the idea there. This is a 14 element lens in 11 groups with seven aspherical elements so that's a pretty complex lens. Seven blades, rounded aperture, has the T anti-glare coating you can get pretty decent bokeh with this and pretty good macro modes. And we're going to splice in some photos, in fact, right now so you can see how it looks. A variety of set settings that we've taken here, some outdoor things, some telephotos, some zoom and a couple of macros, low light shots. And none of these have been touched up with Photoshop at all. So this is a shot from the camera. In fact, using JPEG mode, not even using RAW mode because... Honestly, the, the camera's JPEG algorithm is pretty good on this, and it compensates well for the barrel distortion of the lens, and in raw, you get a little bit more richness if you want to do that, but the camera does a good enough job. I think a lot of people are just going to be happy with JPEG. So now you've seen the pictures, and I think they speak for themselves. In the end, what's important is how good a camera is it, how, how good are the photos it takes. And you can see it takes very, very good photos. If I was given a choice between taking my digital SLR that you saw with me or taking this, I'd have no qualms in taking this. Great for a variety of shots, plenty enough aperture for most things that I do. If you're a real serious flower photographer, for example, you're still going to want something even wider than 2.8 for the aperture. But other than that, great. You saw the intro video that we shot using the, this, and now we're going to show you two other cute cat videos. In fact, one in a lot of light and high contrast, and the other in dark lighting, so you can see how the video shooting is. This can shoot in 60p, 60i, or 24p. The interesting thing about this is when it's shooting video, it uses the entire 20 megapixel sensor which is roughly equivalent to 5K, actually. And it 
it's not doing the usual line skipping that you'll see on other hybrid digital still plus video cameras. So the new processor, the Bions X processor, makes that possible. And the idea is you get sharper footage, less moray pattern. And it does seem to do the job. It's quite sharp. And here is our cat doing what he does best, laying on his back. So this is a pretty well-lit room here, but that's a very difficult setting there because we have those bars of natural light coming through on his very white belly. So I would expect to see a little zebra patterning on our viewfinder, but really it's actually handling it pretty well. So that's what a well-lit cat looks like. And we'll show you the dark cat next. And here we have our cat being a little bit more active now. This was taken at night in a fairly dark room with no strobes, no nothing. And sorry, my handheld photography and videography isn't that good, but you can see I'm zooming in and out. It's maintaining focus really well. We zoom in real tight there. And also the motion when he shook his head captured it pretty well without noise. So now you've seen the sample video footage, low light, highlight and of course the intro again was shot with this camera and you get the idea it's also very capable and the video features on this are pretty darn good things like the microphone in oh by the way this also has a built-in neutral density filter so you can actually use that wide aperture in bright settings if you want better depth of field the uncompressed hdmi out uh, really uh, for anybody who's semi-pro I think this is enough to suit most people when it comes to video recording as well. Um, unless you want to go up to full frame sensor, bigger, heavier, much more expensive cameras, it's really, in a small package like this for the price, it's pretty darn impressive. So how about focusing speeds? Very quick. In low light, still quite quick, and you can see it shows you the multi-zone focusing that it's using right there. Of course, you have things like burst frame bracketing, all of those things are here too. So let's take a look at the zoom, and we're going to use the little button on the front. So it's not that bad. But if I'm using the barrel, there's a, about a whole 180 degrees of turning and there's no indication of when you're stopping and starting. That part is a little bit annoying. But in terms of shooting and focusing and actually even zooming, not so bad at all. And if you want to shoot a movie, you can just hit the movie button. That's typical for Sony. They make it very easy. And you're not limited to just auto mode. You can choose a mode right here. You can choose the video mode. You can change all of your settings by choosing the movie mode up here, which is quite nice. And lastly, you can see here, I've just hit the F on button. That brings up a whole bunch of controls and you can pick what, which of these are here for quick access. So when you're shooting, you can make changes just like that. So say I want to change my ISO from auto to 125. It's as simple as that. Press the center button and we're done. So that's the Sony DSC-RX10. Let's just call it the RX10. As I said, there's really nothing like it. Sony's been doing some amazing things with cameras and this is kind of a first also. Pretty much you've got what feels like a compact SLR with a, a lens that would cost you about thousand dollars or it does the job of two lenses built in so you don't really need to change lenses so often. For a lot of people, I think this answers pretty much all needs. Good for 1080p video recording, great for still photography. Obviously you can go even higher, you can get a full frame digital SLR, but that's not what this is about. This is about simple all-in-one kind of, you got it there, but with full manual control. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full review, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.